Okay, traders, that's uh, 2 p.m. UK time. Uh, if you can hear me and you can see my screen, can you type a Y in the chat box so I know we are good to get going here. A Y in the chat box, if you can hear me. Testing audio, one, two, three. Good stuff, thanks very much. Okay, before we jump into today's charts and setups, want to uh, just quickly adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most importantly for today's session, uh, the views expressed by me today are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by uh, Tickmill UK or Tickmill uh, Europe Limited. And for those of you who are here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from King's College London, I went on to join a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. So I had a pretty much a front row seat to the dot-com bubble. Uh, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally at times overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets, had some capital to play with and some time on my hands. So I started day trading the S&P 500 or more appropriately day gambling. Um, after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginner's luck ran out and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into positions, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of uh, developing a strategy that uh, crucially suits my personality, um, back testing and forward testing. All of this was underpinned by a rigorous risk management strategy. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer uh, concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a string of trades. My focus is on the next hundred trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered annual profit, uh, has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, from 2013, I have also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I have mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my uh, fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert uh, for Tickmill, exclusively providing market and trade analysis. Uh, you can access that through their blog. You can actually sign up to get my daily market outlook. I also produce daily uh, technical videos showing uh, setups that I'm tracking in the markets, and you can uh, access those either through my LinkedIn feed or through uh, my Instagram account there, Patrick Manley FX. And I guess lastly, the, uh, the other passion project for me is leading trading education for a premier trading education brand called FX Career Swap. Com. 
we offer uh, development and funding to retail trading talent. At FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Uh, if you want to get in touch or learn more about what we're doing at FX Career Swap, you can call the trade desk in London or drop the team an email and they'll come back to you with more information. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Let's jump into today's charts. And I want to start with a quick look at the S&P 500 on the weekly time frame. Now, I highlighted uh, last week that we are coming into a very pivotal period, uh, to my mind anyway, for the S&P 500. Uh, the, time, the, the time sequence or time series here suggests that from our March low last year, uh, the S&P has tended to top out, at least in the interim. I'm, again, I'm not calling for uh, the end of the world here. I'm just looking for a tradable corrective pattern. Um, the S&P has tended to top out uh, in 24 week cycles. Now, I also note that we are trading into uh, the trend line resistance from the 2016 low, which we held in 2018. And we are sitting right at it at the moment uh, on a third test. Now, for those of you who are familiar with my work, um, third tests of the trend line I pay very close attention to. We've also got this uh, ascending trend line, which we are moving into as well. And, uh, and we've got this time sequence and we're sitting right on uh, the momentum support here uh, with significant divergence in play. So there are a bunch of factors here at the moment that lead me to think that we could see at least a, uh, a corrective phase of probably uh, two to three weeks. Seasonally, August has uh, tended to be a period, or sorry, late July to August has tended to be a period where we see a bit of an uptick in volatility and, uh, and that tends to drive a, uh, a reduction in risk sentiment and, um, and that's what I'm looking to play for at the moment. So if we take that onto the daily time frame, um, for those of you who are following me uh, through the Facebook channels will know that I'm, uh, I've got a short position running in the E-mini uh, S&P. This is the S&P uh, standard contract here. And I was looking, or certainly we talked last week about the potential of getting another leg higher to uh, to pin this uh, ascending trend line and this wedge that we've been developing over the past uh, year and a half. But uh, it looks at the moment like we're seeing a bit of, uh, a bit of weakness step, step in. So I want to pay very close attention today to the price action. Certainly we want to see if we can get through uh, this trend line support here, which we're sitting on right at the moment. So uh, any move through uh, 43.42 on the downside, could set up uh, certainly a test down into the 42.87 and potentially these prior highs, monthly pivot and uh, ascending trend line support, 42.60 area. So really key day today, we've got options expiration tomorrow. Uh, that tends to add a bit of volatility as, uh, as a bunch of options contracts roll off. And, um, and like I say, we're heading into a period here where I think we could see uh, a correction develop. So if we take a look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ, um, Getting a few tails here, suggesting some uh, some distribution or some supply at the current levels. So we're uh, we're struggling here at fifteen thousand. I still would ideally like to see a test of a third test of this ascending trend line resistance to complete this sequence. Um, but we it may be now that we we pull back here into the pivot at uh, fourteen thousand seven hundred and get that final advance potentially into tomorrow. Or the, or the beginning of next week before we then uh, we could then see a more significant corrective move develop. But again, pay attention to these trend lines. If we take out trend line support here at 14,700, it may be that we have our fifth wave already in place. Uh, you can see, we've, again, we've got this really uh, prominent uh, momentum divergence here. So we've met what could be the minimum requirements if we, uh, let me just jump onto a four hour chart here. So we have, uh, if this is going to be our three, four here, third wave high, fourth wave, we did hold the trend line here, just extend that up. There we go. 
So if um, if this is our fifth wave, what we what I'm always looking for in a fifth wave um, completion or potential completion as an additional confirmation is that we at least test the one two seven extension of the wave of the potential wave four as a minimum upside objective. So if we get that test and we we have tested it here pretty much to the tick at fourteen thousand nine hundred eighty six, and again the other confirmation that I'm always looking for if I'm going to be playing uh, counter trends is that momentum divergence which we've got nicely there. So um, this is this has met the minimum requirements here uh, to be a. Uh, a wave five sequence that's completed. So like I say, watch for a breach of the trend line. Uh, ideally, um, what I'd be looking for here would be this type of pattern. So we get down in here and then uh, pull back to retest the trend line from below. And then that should set up the, uh, the wave, the next wave to the downside. Certainly we can think about three wave correction and minimum objectives for that are going to be the 38.2% uh, retracement of the uh, of the prior sequence, so I'll put us back down into fourteen thousand two hundred as uh, as a minimum downside objective. So uh, just something to keep in mind there on the Nasdaq. Let's go back to the daily charts. The Dow also uh, struggling now. What the Dow's done here is it's retested its broken trend line support. This is from the uh, pandemic lows here last March, and. Uh, we, uh, we're checking back now at the underside, potential double top in play here. And what do we want to see when we're looking at those type of patterns? Momentum divergence. So it could be that the uh, that we're not going to see another high here in the down now, and um, and we are going to uh, going to look for a rollover from current levels. So let's uh, let's look at technically where we can start to think about prime locations for a short position. So you can see we're kind of in this wedge now using the underside of the prior trend line support. So any break really of the pivot here, uh, 34,597 is, uh, is an opportunity to, uh, to my mind anyway, to get in on the short side. And I'd be looking as an initial downside objective into uh, this 33,000 level and the third test of this uh, trend line, internal trend line there is, uh, is what I'd be paying attention to in the Dow. DAX was looking for, ideally for it to get a third test of this uh, ascending trend line. Doesn't look like we're getting, well, potentially we're not going to see that now. Um, so if the, the DAX uh, takes out the pivot here at uh, 15,559, then the next downside objective is going to be 15,132. Nikkei, the weakest of the, uh, the indexes that I track here, hasn't, uh, I was looking for a test of this sending trend line resistance but it's looking shaky at the moment and so uh the nikkei could potentially have topped out here and then what we'll be looking for is uh, is a move down to test this descending trend line projected descending trend line support um, first stop will be the equal legs versus this swing structure let me just put that in there so you can see what i mean so we've got this leg this leg and this leg um, and potentially then an extension down to this 25,500 in, uh, in this descending pattern here. So that's what I'm watching on the Nikkei, the VIX. It's the other uh, trade that I've got on at the moment as well as being short the E-mini S&Ps. Um, VIX is obviously the volatility indicator, um, level of uh, insurance in the market, so to speak. And uh, we got down sub 15 and you can see similar to uh, the summer of 2020, uh, we made an initial spike down uh, end of July, and then we rotated, uh, but held uh, held this every time we tested the trend line, we popped back above it. And so similar pattern here, potentially developing, we could see another test of the 15, but I've got some positions running um, in, the, uh, in the VIX. And what I'm ultimately looking for is a spike up to take out uh, the 22 handle and ultimately see a test of 28 is where my, my target is for uh, for the VIX there. Let's jump into some of these uh, Forex instruments. And this is the equal weight of dollar index. There's quite there's quite an interesting um, pattern developing in, uh, in a bunch of these using the pitchfork. I don't know how experienced any of you are in terms of using this tool, but it is a nice, uh, nice trading instrument when you get a bunch of confirmations, and I think that's what we're seeing here in terms of uh, in terms of the forex market, certainly. 
so whilst we hold this swing high, I'm looking for a test of uh, 118.30. If we take that out, uh, if, we, if we continue to find support of this uh, internal trend line or parallel, um, then what we can think about is a move up into the projected target zone uh, before we see a, another corrective leg here in terms of the equal weighted dollar index. So this is the dollar index um, versus uh, the Aussie, the Euro, the Yen and Sterling. Trades a little bit differently to the, uh, the broader dollar index. And we'll take a look at that in a second. But certainly this, if we, um, if we take out these highs, then we look for an extension up into this target zone uh, with the dollar finding a bit of strength here. And so again, in terms of the dollar, uh, if we are going to see a bit of a wobble here in terms of risk sentiment, that should lead to uh, some more dollar strength here. Let's take a look at the equal weighted dollar index. And again, I've applied the pitchfork here. So we're trading um, in this, this channel here. You can see it's held nicely. I was looking for a pullback uh, to test this support zone for trading up into uh, the 93.74, which is the equal legs of this swing structure. And I've got some Elliott Wave notes on here as well but that's what we're looking for ultimately is a move up into 93.74 then through there we've got the yearly pivots at 94.10 uh, and i would expect to see some profit taking or the potential that we complete a higher time frame uh, wave four sequence but we'll play it uh, step by step here and just watch the price action develop um, but at the moment we're holding the weekly pivot here and uh, finding some strength as these you can see the equity markets uh, all red at the moment, and that's why we're seeing bid into the uh, dollar at this stage. 10-year yield. We got, uh, we, did, we got the pop from the uh, equal legs objective, and uh, so versus this structure here. I was looking for a move ideally into get a test of this descending trend line resistance for getting down to test the yearly pivot. Obviously we've had uh, Fed Chair Powell uh, up, on, uh, the, up on the hill in the US uh, with his testimony to the, uh, the US uh, Congress yesterday and the Senate today. Uh, and he continues to, uh, to fashion the tone of, uh, of someone who believes in the transitory nature of the current uh, spike in inflation and so uh, markets are, are repricing at the moment with respect to um, rate expectations and so as long as he continues to uh, to make that dovish to keep that dovish tone that should see pressure on the yields here but we're going to move to we're going to get to a phase where it's either going to become a, it's, it's going to become very apparent that either this inflation isn't transitory and if it isn't then the fed are going to have to act and uh, and act pretty rapidly i think uh, to catch up with the uh, the inflation we're seeing so we'll see how uh, how this one develops but uh, obviously as we see weight in terms of the yields um, more often than not that correlates with weakness in the dollar but at the moment uh, we're seeing the dollar uh, supported for now. So keep an eye on this 10-year yield. It's a, it's a canary in the, uh, in, the coal, in the proverbial coal mine, so to speak. And so um, I'm keeping, paying close attention to that. Gold. <coughs> so gold uh, has made a nice advance here. Uh, again, I've applied a pitchfork. What I'd really like to see now with gold, uh, I don't know if we'll get it, but potentially here as we hold this resistance, is a pullback into... Uh, this 1779 area. And uh, if we get that, or, or we could extend into the lower parallel here, 1765, but anything in this zone here uh, with a bullish reversal pattern, I think is a nice setup in terms of gold. And what you, when you buy this, uh, this initial retest of the, uh, of the lower parallel, the immediate target for that is the, uh, the medium point of the, of the pitchfork. And if we can get through there, uh, then you're targeting the top side, obviously. But again, step by step, don't get ahead of yourself. Um, but we could see a nice setup here in gold in terms of uh, if we can get this pullback into uh, this, this zone here. This is where I would be looking for long positions in gold. I think we could, uh, you could get a nice run. Uh, so keep an eye on this area here in gold. 1760 to 1780 uh, is the zone that I'd be paying attention to on the long side. And again, what's gonna drive this move? Well, if we get an interim bit of strength here in the dollar, 
then we get that pull back into this zone. Watch for bullish reversal patterns, um, I think it's after the races. Silver, sitting in its, uh, its triangle still. Again, with silver here, um, what I've been watching is uh, any more tests into this uh, 2560 area. Uh, as long as we've got uh, bullish uh, momentum, uh, then we could see a test of the triangle resistance. Uh, and ultimately then what we'd look for is that there should be one more test of support before breaching the triangle, uh, potentially to the upside here. So um, not, not active in silver at the moment. I prefer the gold setup, but I, have, yeah, I will certainly pay attention to any tests into this 2560. And the test, uh, any test at 27 that holds and that last pullback into the apex of the triangle is a high probability play for a continuation to the upside. Equally, if we take out the trend line support, then we can start to think about downside targets. And um, what I'm always looking for is the quality objectives. So if we do take out that support, then we can look for a move down. 22.93 is an equal legs move uh, versus this structure. And it also brings us into our uh, range support, what it has technically been range support because we can frame the price action in terms of silver at the moment as a, uh, it's just trading in this much bigger range here. And, uh, and that would set up a nice test of range support before then we could be looking again on the long side. But and, and my immediate focus is, uh, is gonna be on this, this triangle pattern in terms of silver. Crude oil. So we, uh, we've been tracking the, the test of this sending trend line resistance. We're now looking at testing um, this internal trend line support. So if we get a close through 71.20, I think we uh, will trade 66.50s and this, uh, this trend line support here and potentially extend into the major trend line support at 63.90 from the, uh, the pandemic lows there. But I think that then will set up a buying opportunity and we can certainly start to think about testing the top side of this, uh, of this projected ascending trend line resistance. We also have the 127 extension of, the, uh, of that dive uh, into uh, into those lows last uh, last March. So uh, paying, paying attention to a break of the support here, short positions in to test this uh, pivotal support zone, and then we could be looking again on the long side. Copper, <coughs> I don't think we've got anything. Waiting for a test of the trend line here off the, uh, the pandemic lows would be a third test. So obviously I want to pay a lot of attention to how we trade when we look at that for... 0 0.0984 level. Um, speed up a little bit here. Um, Bitcoin still, to my mind, is uh, is consolidating, and uh, and we should see another leg lower in terms of Bitcoin. I'm I'm really keen to see if we can get the test of the yearly pivot. I think that could present a, a decent long opportunity. Uh, let's just have a look here. Dollar yen. Whilst it holds that, uh, that trend line resistance point, we can think about an equal legs objective at 108.50s. So uh, through 109, we could play for uh, a nice quick test of 108.50. Let's take a look at the Swissy. Swissy, I'll put the, uh, the pitchfork on here. This one could be setting up as well. So what I, what I want to see here with the Swissy is, um, let me draw this in for a minute. It's just to get that test here of this uh, lower trend line. So any move into 9090 should set up a nice uh, long opportunity to play for the midpoint here up into 9550s, or certainly we can think about uh, the current resistance at 9468. So uh, that's going to be an area I'm paying close attention to, 1995 in terms of the Swissy. Euro. <clears throat> Looking now as we hold the, uh, the pivot here, 118.50s for a break of 117.75 down into the prior lows, 117.70. And then the equal legs objective uh, puts us down into the uh, 16.22 support zone. And certainly from there, and we've got that descending trend line support. From there, I'll be paying very close attention to, uh, to how we trade because that could put in a, uh, a significant low there in terms of the euro. And, uh, and we could be setting up for the next leg to the upside. Uh, which are the other ones? Uh, so the Aussie, 
Aussie sitting right at the equal legs that we've been tracking. Uh, bids have emerged here, but we're, we're in a, pretty much in a consolidation zone. And really, until we can get through the 75 handle, uh, that should set up a test then of 76 in this descending trend channel uh, using the pitchfork again. And we'll see how uh, see how prices respond. If we can't get if if we fail at seventy four seventeen, then the next support comes down into monthly range support seventy three to seventy three twenty. Uh, Kiwi, he was at an interesting point as well. Obviously, the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand came out a little bit more hawkish, but we're actually sitting at this uh, at this pitchfork resistance here. So any failure. Uh, here would be an opportunity on the short side to play for the equal legs target. The Aussie has tested its equal legs, but the Kiwi has yet to do that. And so we could be thinking about a test of 68 markets. Obviously got pretty bulled up after that uh, that meeting, but we'll have to see how, uh, how it plays out. If we take out this trend line, then uh, we can think about the long sides, certainly into uh, 7190s on the upside. Swiss yen is one that uh, is getting interesting as well. If we get a move into support here at 118.68, I want to be thinking about long positions, certainly retest re prior highs, 122.74. Um, Cad yen. Cad yen, again, we've got a nice trend line test coming up, a third test here at 87.18. If we get that and, uh, and we find some support here, then, uh, then I think we can start to think about this trend line up into 94.50s as uh, once we get through these prior highs at 91.15. So this one I'm monitoring closely. Uh, Sterling, got a bit of a pop here today, but we've, we're, I want to be long Sterling through 139, looking for a test of 140.30. And then from there, I think we'll see if we get these bearish reversal patterns from the parallel. And, uh, and then we can start to think about the equality objective versus this swing structure at 136.65. And that will be a key decision point then is if we are going to see another leg higher in terms of sterling. Um, okay, so I've been running there for about 30 minutes. Uh, those are the, the key setups that I'm watching at the moment. I mean, my really, my focus is broadly at this stage on these equity markets. July uh, for Forex tends to be extremely choppy. So, uh, so I've, I'm, my, my main trading vehicles at the moment are... Uh, are in these equity indices and, uh, and the VIX, but I'm watching the dollar and a few of these yen pairs as well, and the Swissy and gold certainly of interest. So keeping an eye on those over the coming sessions. So I'll just, uh, I'll open up a, a quick Q and A here. Does anyone have any questions uh, or a chart they'd like me to take a look at that I haven't covered? Um, equally, what's helpful for me, if you don't have a question, uh, if you type an N in the chat box, so I know we're all on the, same page and uh, I can potentially uh, wrap this up. Q&A, question, okay. Uh, which platform are you using for this chart analysis? Um, I'm using TradingView. Uh, you can see there tradingview.com is, uh, is the platform I use. Any other questions? An N in the chat box if you uh, if you don't have a question. Okay, I can't see any question any other questions coming through. So, uh, uh, which platform should we use to trade? Uh, the the Tickmill platform. The you can use the MT4 platform, or they have a web trader. Ruth. Okay, thanks very much everyone for your time and I hope you found this, uh, this useful and we will uh, we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much everyone. Have a good, great weekend.